Okay, guys, you see what's up. Another bad news story, unfortunately. The fifth transgender woman to be killed this year has been shot dead in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Now, that marks the sixth transgender woman to be killed in Philadelphia in six years. Okay. Now, this weekend, we talked about Malaysia Booker. She was 23. She went actually viral for getting a beatdown in Dallas. A couple months ago, she was found dead shot on Saturday. Okay. Now, how many times she was shot? I don't know. I'm hearing conflicting reports. They, but she was shot at least once. So, you know, do with that what you will. It wasn't, some might say, well, it wasn't overkill. Maybe it wasn't a hate crime. I think it was. I think we're seeing a trend here. You're seeing a trend. It's coming from the White House, kicking them out of the military. It's coming from evangelicals who don't want to let them use the bathroom. And it's coming from the black community where most of these women are getting murdered, unfortunately. So, as you can see, black transgender women are in extreme risk. They're at extreme risk for violence. This woman, Michelle Washington, 40 years old, who was shot in Philadelphia. Let's talk about her for a second. Michelle Washington went by Tamika. She was shot dead at 40 years old in Philadelphia. She was an LGBT activist. She was an activist in the queer community. Okay, so that alone probably gave her some visibility. Keep that, keep that in mind. After Malaysia Booker got beat up, there was a huge backlash. Huge backlash, as there should have been. And that gave her some visibility, and next thing you know, she gets shot down. A very, very vulnerable minority in the population that is very, very subject to violence, in fact. Okay? Now, when they become visible, they seem to be even more subject to ridicule, of course. You're going to see this. And that's what seems to happen here. You had this LGBT activist, someone who was fighting for the queer community, get shot down a day after, a day after another high visibility black trans woman gets shot down. I think something's going on. In America, you'll notice these things happen in fits and spurts. There's trends, though. It is a trend. Same thing with the Jewish community. Whenever there's an attack on the Jewish community, you can be certain that there will be follow-up copycat attacks. It, it, um, it makes people feel like they can do it too. It really does. It makes people emboldened. It's not just because of the president, although he's a very, very big perpetrator of this anti-trans bigotry. Okay, he has not done anything to protect their communities, and Republicans won't. They will not try to protect these people. Now, what are we going to do? We have to show solidarity now. We can't wait any longer until it's a... You can't say, oh, well, they're such a small group. That's not an excuse. The individual is a minority. The individual is the ultimate minority. You're not going to defend individuals. Well, then why can't we defend a group of individuals? Why can't we do that? I see nothing wrong with getting out in front of this, with positive messaging, with hate crime laws as well, and with solidarity of force. When we stick together, they can't, they can't take us all down, man. They can try, but they can't. Believe you me. You have to hold up one banner together. Now, I understand everybody wants to pick a certain uh, identity for themselves. You don't want to take responsibility for the shitty things America's done that you had nothing to do with. People want to say, well, I'm not trans, so I shouldn't have to worry about that. Or I'm not gay, so I shouldn't have to worry about that. Or you're not an atheist like me, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. But we all got to worry about that. All of us have to worry about this. Okay? 
It's just like the old saying goes, first they came for the Jews, then they came for the trade unions, and then they came for me, and nobody was left to defend me. Okay? That's what happens. They start picking us off, one by one. Defend, divide, and conquer. That's the flavor of the day. Believe it. You can believe it. And you're seeing it right now. Now we got to stand together. And crush these people at the top who are trying to divide us. You know that's right. Class warfare has always been waged by the top 1% against the rest. I say so be it. The fight is on. They've divided us enough. Let's stop hurting each other. I'll be back with more folks.